Hey everyone, so the Wano War is finally beginning, and I think we're all expecting it to be the most epic battle in One Piece since Marineford, or even beyond that. And of course, objectively speaking, the stakes are very high. We have an entire country on the line, we're up against two Yonko, etc. However, even though it has all the makings of an epic war on paper, I think now is a good time to talk about whether or not the emotional stakes of the arc match the premise. Because, after all, one of the most brilliant aspects of Marine Ford was not just that Oda brought, you know, hundreds of chapters of world building together into one unimaginably large scale conflict, it was the unprecedented level of emotional investment he brought out in the main character by making the centerpiece of the war his brother. It was the perfect way to make a battle that had objectively high stakes in the context of the world and equally high emotional stakes for the actual character that we are attached to, basically creating an extremely emotionally intense and dramatic arc overall. And as much as I've enjoyed Wano's Act 1 and Act 2, I would be lying if I said I thought that going into the Wano War itself we have anywhere close to as much emotional weight as we had going into Marine 4. But that's not to say that we're not going to get that, or even that we should have gotten that already. Really, with this video, I just want to do a bit of a retrospective, looking back at the different ways Oda has built up that emotional investment in past arcs, and the different routes he could go with Wano as the war begins. So, first of all, I understand that how emotionally invested you may feel in an arc is totally subjective. Maybe you feel more emotionally invested right now in Wano than at any other point in the series. You can't really argue about how each individual reader should be feeling right now, but what can be compared is how emotionally invested the actual main characters, the Straw Hats, are in the conflict. Later on, I'll talk about how the emotional investment of the main characters often correlates to how invested the readers themselves feel in the story, but for the moment, let's just look at where Wano is now and how it compares to similar points in the past. So right now, we could call this the point of heading into battle, right? It seems like most of the setup has been done, the protagonists are setting out to attempt the main mission of the arc, and so now the action phase is beginning. So what has this similar point looked like in the past? Well, in Alabasta, by the time the final showdown in Aluberna was set, and the crew realized that this would be the final battle, their attitude going into that was deathly serious. There were a lot of other characters heading into this battle, it was obviously very large scale, but ultimately it was the Straw Hat's demeanor that really cemented the weight behind what was about to come. And honestly, this was probably the most shaken up and on edge the crew as a whole had been up till this point in the series. Now this was taken up another level in Water 7 slash Ennis Lobby, where really even from very early in the arc, even just in their initial charge into battle to get Robin back, they were treating the situation with absolute seriousness. And so by the time it legitimately came to their big mission, the real heading out to battle, when they resolved to go to Ennis Lobby to get Robin back, the crew was at the most emotionally charged we'd ever seen them so far. And beyond that, we had Marine Ford, where I'm not even going to bother putting up panels because I'm sure you all remember that Luffy's journey from Impel Down through heading out for Marine Ford was by far the most consistently serious and determined he's been in the entire series. Now, to be clear, that's not to say that there weren't plenty of lighthearted gag moments from the Straw Hats in these arcs. Even when things are supposed to be super serious as they head out for the big battle, you know, this is one piece, Oda is always going to include plenty of comedy, the crew, and especially Luffy, will always be a little goofy, even at serious times. But the difference is the overall number of serious moments and serious panels significantly spiked up at the points I'm talking about in Alabasta, Ennis Lobby, and Marine Ford. Now, so if taking all that into account, if we compare that to the similar point we seem to have reached in Wano, the point of heading out to the big final battle, the strats are not being written like this at all, right? They pretty much only have had lighthearted moments so far. You see almost zero serious panels of the crew, and I promise I'm not cherry picking here. I read back through the entire week leading up to the big battle, all the way up till chapter, the current chapter 977, you know, the day of the fire festival, and I found only two panels of any straw hats displaying any sort of real serious drive or determination towards this conflict. Maybe two and a half if you count this one where Luffy's thinking about if Jinbei's going to show up. You can literally do panel-to-panel -panel comparisons of similar moments to see that the tone is completely different from the previous storylines that I talked about. In fact, for the stakes being so high, it seems deliberate by Oda to make the Straw Hats' attitude so casual towards this whole affair, or 
At least, I'd like to think so. And by this point in the video, you might be getting a little annoyed thinking, Morge, you cherry-picked Alabasta and he's lobbying Marine Ford. What about all the other arcs where the strides did get more serious once the fight started, but weren't actually as serious before the final battle started? And yeah, you see this really in most One Piece arcs, right? Like Skypiea, Thriller Bark, uh, Punk Hazard, etc. Now, this isn't a critique of arcs like uh, Skypiea. I really like that arc, and I know it's a popular niche pick for other One Piece fans. I like it largely for the lore, the location, and the story of the Shandians. But the fact is, the Strahds themselves had the attitude of tourists for most of the arc including going into the action phase. This is the more common situation, where the crew obviously gets more serious once the fighting starts, but they're not exactly super emotional about anything for the majority of the arc leading up to that main event. And you know, what's interesting is that if you look at really large scale best arc polls, the top picks are almost always Marine Ford, Ennis Lobby, and Alabasta, which as I mentioned, also happen to be the storylines where the main characters are the most emotionally invested. So again, how moving an arc is, is subjective to each reader, but there does seem to be a correlation between what arcs most readers enjoy and how invested the main characters are in those arcs. You know, my personal belief is that since we are most, uh, we most readers are most invested in the actual crew and their experiences. So arcs that have the most emotionally heavy storylines for the crew themselves naturally build the most dramatic momentum going into the finale of the arc. Basically, by the time we finally get to the action phase of the arc, it already feels like a powerful story has been built, rather than relying on the final battle to make it a powerful story. So, for instance, one of the most iconic moments in the series is the Straw Hats all lined up, facing the Tower of Justice, ready to go to war with the entire world for their crewmate. The final battle hasn't even started yet, but this moment of them lined up and ready to fight already carries so much weight and feels epic because it's built on all the emotional highs and lows they had to experience throughout the arc to finally get to this point where they can now fight back. I could scale it back to even talk about just Arlong Park, which is an extremely simple arc very early in the series, much, much shorter and more straightforward than any of the arcs I've talked about so far. But yet, why is it that many fans still remember it as the first major high point in One Piece? Why is it that so many anime viewers in particular still remember that walk to Arlong Park as one of the most iconic moments of the series? That's because even though it's such a small arc with such a basic plot, the walk to Arlong Park had the same kind of energy as the Strahds lined up at the Tower of Justice, and it came from establishing a powerful emotional investment beforehand, an extremely personal drive and determination to fight. This type of energy is not just something that comes out of thin air, right? Oda had to put time into the crew's emotional state throughout the arc beforehand. It's the same reason I believe Fishman Island is not a favorite for many readers. And though I appreciate the arc a lot more now, it's clear to me that Oda deliberately didn't build up the stakes of the arc that much since it was mostly meant to be an intermission and exposition storyline. So the Strats lining up here is cool because it is the first badass double page spread we have of them all after the time skip, but there's not a lot of dramatic weight actually going into this conflict for them, since Oda kept their attitude towards the whole affair pretty casual up to this point. So they're not going into the fight with this kind of energy. And that brings us back to Wano, where this energy, it's just not there for the crew, yet. It's very hard for me to imagine them showing up at Kaido's gate with this sort of energy at the moment without it feeling forced. And that energy can't just be created out of nowhere, Oda didn't really focus much on serious dramatic moments for the Straw Hats in Act 1 or Act 2. So the time for their emotional investment to really build up wasn't there. The exceptions are, I'd say Luffy and Zoro, I think he definitely did a good job getting the ball rolling for them. And though I was excited when those moments happened, over the course of the following week actually leading up to the battle, the momentum doesn't seem to have carried over for them as much to today, at least as I've noticed so far. Now. You might say it doesn't matter that the Strats aren't as invested since obviously the Wano-centric characters are taking this extremely seriously. They're approaching all this as if it's the most important battle of their lives, and that's been the case throughout the arc. But really, that's not something new that doesn't really differentiate Wano. That's pretty par for the course for most One Piece arcs. The standard is usually that the characters specific to the island are going to care way more about the conflict than the Straw Hats themselves do. The rarity is when the Straw Hats are collectively, personally invested in the conflict of the arc themselves. So again, that is what I'm hoping to see to take Wano to that next level. So while we've been around the Scabbards for a while, ultimately they are not our main characters. So that brings us to the question of 
What is it that Oda does to specifically make his conflicts more emotional for the Striats going into the big battle? Very simply, it usually comes down to how close it hits home for them, whether it's, you know, one of their own at stake. So yes, most every arc features the crew making friends with islanders who are invested in the conflict, and by the end, the Straw Hats will fight for their sake, and sometimes these people even become their crewmates by the end. But what gets the crew in full-on serious mode before the fight even starts from earlier on in the arc is when it's about one of their own from the get-go. So Nami and Arlong Park had been with the crew all this time. Vivi and Alabasta had essentially become a crewmate by the point they got there. Robin and Ennis Lobby was the ultimate friendship rescue arc. And even though he wasn't a crew member, Ace in Marine Ford was arguably even a step further as he was Luffy's own brother. Now, that doesn't mean a crewmate has to be captured or something, obviously, since ultimately it's up to Oda how much of a rise something like that is going to get out of Straw Hats. For example, like in Thriller Bark, Nami was captured, but that wasn't really written to be a big deal, and the lighthearted tone of the arc persisted even as they set off for the action phase of the arc. Even in Wano itself, Luffy was technically captured, but Oda chose not to make that shift the attitude of the Straw Hats to become more serious, likely as it was deliberately early in the arc. So really, there's no specific rule for how Oda should go about making this a more personal conflict for the Straw Hats. He can do it however he wants, but ultimately there does need to be some sort of a major upcoming catalyst for a shift in what the storyline and this conflict means for the crew. As longtime viewers know, I still personally believe the best way Oda could do it at this point is through a major defeat at Onigashima. Since in storytelling in general, failure is one of the best catalysts for shaking characters up and forcing a new mindset. So introspection, struggle, growth, testing the bond, the will of the group as a whole, that could come from an unprecedentedly huge loss such as this. Now at the same time, this very well could all end at Onigashima, in which case Oda has deliberately chosen to keep the arc pretty lax from the Straw Hat's perspective up till this point. If that's the case, I would expect a very long conflict at Onigashima which would have to introduce a lot of new story elements within just that section of the arc before getting to the main fights in order to build more dramatic weight. Maybe it is a crewmate in danger, maybe it's a close ally, but I do think it has to be something that shakes them up collectively. So basically, no matter what, for the highly hyped up Wano War to ultimately be more than just a series of fights, in the next stretch of chapters, Oda needs some catalyst to set up some emotional storylines for the Straw Hats before we get to the fights. That's all for this video. If you enjoyed, then definitely like, share, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you all later.